I hate it been a kid. Honestly, <laughs> I know it's a weird thing to say, but I hated it. I remember being six years old. We went to this shopping center called Bells in Florida. And my parents were shopping around and they kind of left me in this toy store. And I'm walking up and down this toy store and I remember vividly seeing this toy. It was an action figure of a Hulk. And it was the coolest thing I've ever seen. I was in love with this thing. So I'm, I'm planning on how I'm gonna pitch to my dad when he comes. And he comes, I'm like, Dad, Dad, I've gotta have this toy. Dad, I've seen something. And I take his hand, I walk him down the aisle. And I'm like, look. And I'm telling him all these things that it can do. And I'm, I'm selling him hard, right? And uh, he just says, no, it's too expensive. And I'm like, what? And I couldn't close him. I couldn't change his mind. But the thing I hated more than anything was the fact that he had this power to stop me getting what I wanted. I hated that I needed his permission. I hated that I couldn't just do what I wanted to do and just buy what I wanted to buy. I hated being a kid. I didn't know it then, but I started a pattern of behavior that then lasted more than 20 years. Because for 20 years, I felt like I needed to have permission. For 20 years, I'm making decisions out of what other people want and whether they think it's okay, rather than what I think. And I start accepting people's ideas. And if I had an idea and they had a different idea, I just assumed that their idea was correct. And so I started negating my own ideas. I started looking at other ideas and looking who's right, who's right, where's the truth, who knows the answers. But all along I, I had my own truth. I was just too scared to go with it. I was too scared to, to try. And this is how life is going. And I remember being 16 and I have to write on a piece of paper, what do I want to be? What job do I want to go into? And I remember the first thing that came in my mind was to work in fashion. I liked the idea of designing things. I love the way people look. I love the way how if you dress somebody differently, they look like they have a different personality. I wasn't even thinking with music back then. I couldn't, I couldn't imagine music. Music was totally unrealistic because I had no idea how you make money working in music. And I had this constant feeling like I need somebody's permission to do the next thing. I need somebody's permission to get my toy. I need somebody's permission to pick the subjects I want to study. I need somebody's permission to pick the career I'm going to do. And how does this story end? It ends like so many other stories. It ends in me working a job I hated. 21 years old, working in a bank. I got the status, I got the money, I got everything my mom wanted for me. And I'm miserable. And I can't understand why. It took me a while to realize, wait, none of this was my idea. None of this was my decision. This moment happened to me, 21 years old, walking out of a bank. Complete freedom. <laughs> Complete freedom. And now my life is nothing more than an example of that freedom. And if I do nothing else for this world, I hope that the way I live sets a good example for other people. I hope I show people what's possible. My mum told me this was too scary. I rang her at four o'clock in the morning on a Thursday night, crying from my desk in the investment bank. And I said, I can't do this anymore. I hate my job. I hate my life. And her response was, Stephen, everybody hates their job. 90% of the people on the planet hate their job. And I carried on. I carried on. Some more weeks. I'm really breaking down. My hair starts falling out. Something's got to change. And luckily I left. It was this breaking point. It was this 20 years of begging for permission. 20 years of begging for approval. 20 years of trying to impress people. 20 years of listening to other people's ideas just snapped. It snapped, I can't do this anymore. I'm going to die. If I keep doing this, I'm going to die. And I'm not prepared to accept that. I should be having fun. These are the golden years of my life. I should be traveling. I want laughter lines on my face. I want to feel life. I want to breathe. I want to feel excitement and passion. I want to have love and loss. I want to fight with life. I want to take the hits. I want to live. And I can't do that behind the protection of somebody else's 
may be true, but may be false ideas. I snapped, and it's the best fucking moment of my life. Dude, the air has never tasted so sweet. I could taste freedom. It is done. And this is the end of 20 years of begging for approval, of begging for permission. It's done. And I have no idea what I'm gonna do next. I never dreamed that I'd have a life like this. I travel the world, I do what I love. There's something funny, coming back and sitting in a place just like where I'm from. I have, I've started having these moments recently where I feel so aligned. Everything in life feels so aligned. This life is a gift. I feel extremely lucky to live this way. I'd like to give it for other people. I want to take people on this journey. I want to start sharing myself, start being more open. I just want to share whatever's inside of me. I don't know what this is. I have this overwhelming gratitude towards life. I have this overwhelming, like, genuinely sometimes it overwhelms me. I don't want to hold on to something. I spent the first 20 years of my life taking. I just want to take, I want to take, I want to have as much as I can. And it was crazy. The more I take, the more empty I became. I just took and I took and I took and eventually I had nothing. And I decided to take a leap of faith. I decided that for a couple months, I was going to make everything in my life about giving. And I go in the street and I change my attitude. What can I give? What can I give? Most people think when you give something, you lose something. It's not true. I can't describe this, but the more I give, the more full I feel. The more I give, the richer I become. And I'm in love. I love this. I love giving it to other people. I love giving people that little piece of freedom. I just love it. And all I want to do is give. I just want to give. I just want to give. I want to give. I want to give. I want to feel it. I can feel it when people are feeling it. It's incredible. I can feel it when we're connected. All of a sudden, people are not thinking about their little lives. They're not thinking about their worries. They're not thinking about their job. They're not thinking about their bank account. They're waking up. They're waking up. They're feeling something. And I can see it. You can see it in their faces. It's the most amazing thing. I consider it a privilege to be able to go around the world doing this. I could explode with gratitude. I think I'm the luckiest man on the planet. I love this life. There are these moments sometimes, it's not every time, it's not every song, but there are these moments sometimes I really, truly feel infinite. The times where I really, really, really know I'm achieving something special is when I become like a mirror. I feel I become reflective. It stops being about what I want to say. It stops being about my message. It stops being about what I'm putting out. I can feel there's this shift. It goes like this. I'm playing, I'm playing. All of a sudden, I'm connected with these people and all of a sudden, I feel I'm reflective. They're no longer thinking about what I'm saying. They're, they're, they're seeing themselves. You started to see who you really are. You started to feel your real feelings, maybe the feelings that you're too scared to look at sometimes. Maybe the feelings that are a little too painful to be with sometimes. That's when you're really hitting something special. And I hit that moment sometimes. When I hit that place, I can feel it. The room goes different. I can see people change. It goes from everybody smiling to this kind of spiritual place. See, for me, great music is a mirror. It reminds you of who you are. It reminds you of your own stories. It reminds you of those things that maybe they're a little hard to look at. It reminds you of your dreams. It reminds you of your pain. And it frees you.
lookers wanna find me What's 50 grand to my me? What's 50 grand to my fucker like me? Can you please remind me? Yeah Oh, I predict an earthquake up in here Oh, yeah I predict an earthquake up in here Look, you need to crop for you ball. Come and meet me in the bathroom stalls and show me why you deserve to have it all. Let me get in my zone. Let me get in my zone. Let me get in my zone. He saw the boys is lying, acting like the sun ain't mine. Don't let me get in my zone. Don't let me get in my zone Let me get in my zone Let me get in my zone He's like the boys is lying Acting like the summer in mine Don't let me get in my zone An artist is somebody who can look at the same thing that everybody else is looking at and see something completely different and then they can show people how to see it their way how to feel it their way and give everybody that experience. An artist is somebody who can take an existing reality and change it. You look at it and you say, well, how else could it be? How can we improve this? What would be a more beautiful way to be? And then you tell people that, and that's art. It moves us forward. Yes, fine, starting in my heart. Each and a fever pitch, and it's bringing me out the dark. I see you crystal clear Go ahead and sell me out And I lay your shit bare The scars of your love Leave me breathless Leave me thinking We could have had it all The scars of your love you ready? Are you gonna sing with me? We could have had it all Nothing in this world feels better than that, my friend.